right, boys, we are back. Time to continue our Calgary Flames NHL 13 GM mode commentary. Now, the last video was kind of an introduction, and we still have a few more videos before we even get the simulation started. All right, because we got to figure out where we're going with the Calgary Flames. I pretty much have a good idea, but I still have a few more things to explain to you guys. In the last video, I ended with asking you what you wanted to see, if there was anything else that I forgot about. And there was one top comment asking about... Um, how players decline, how they get worse when they get older. Um, it kind of ties into two different things. I'll try to explain it to you guys, all right? So say I go to my uh, line changes, all right? Now, first of all, players, there's no more, you know, um, A, B, C, D anymore. And since the player's potential always stays the same, you can't really tell if he's going down or all, at all. All right, so Jerome McGinley, he's four star. That will never drop to like three and a half star, three star. It's not going to work like that. Basically, a player will start to decline once he's in his 30s, right? About around uh, 30, 31. That's what they were saying. Um, but you can counteract their um, decline because of their age if you if they continue to have really good high scoring seasons, right? So, for example, Jerome McGinley, he's 85 overall. Say I didn't play him this year at all, and he didn't retire. Next year he might only be um, 84, 83. Fine. But if we play him this year, and say just say I played every game, I actually went in, I didn't simulate, and I got Jerome McGinley 100 points. All right, even though he's going down because of his age. Age, since he had 100 points, he might get a boost in a few other categories, right? So he actually might go up to 86, all right? So that's how the player, um, that's how the players decline. And also, um, you have to play players on their designated line. Like we go back to, okay, I'll go back to Jerome McGinley. It says, it says Jerome McGinley is a second line forward. You have to make sure you play Jerome McGinley on either the second or first line. If you play him on a line uh, below what he is, say we put him on the third line, next year he will be down to like uh, an 81 because of his age and the fact that you're turning him into a third line scorer. So he doesn't get the minutes that a second or first liner does. So those are the kind of things that uh, come into play when your player is declined. Um, are you giving him the time on the ice that he should be getting? All right. Is he getting enough points during the regular season to be getting better and how old he is? All right. Um, so good player, good players like Dotsuk, they can still stay in the nineties overall, as long as they're getting first line minutes and getting, you know, 70, 80 points a season, they'll counteract their age decline. All right. So that's how it uh, works for, um, players who are going to retire. Don't worry, you'll see it how it works when we uh, get to years two and three. You'll start to see players getting older, all right? Um, now, I, I don't know why I left line change. we got to go back into that. So, now that you guys know about the uh, player uh, the player types, like the first liners, the second liners, that's how you can tell if you have a team ready to go for the playoffs. If we're going to be a playoff team, we need thir three first liners, uh, three second liners, three third liners, three fourth liners. Same thing with uh, defense and same thing with goaltender, right? So, let's check out every position here. Goalie. I think Kiprasov is, a, yeah, he's an elite goalie. You see that, how it says hybrid goalie, 87 overall, elite goalie? He can be your starter. So goaltending is fine. Um, goaltender is not going to hold us back, all right? So we have an elite goalie. Uh, offense, now let's see what happens here. Did I go to the best lines already? Hang on, let me just do best lines. All right, Tange. Now, Tange, see what I mean? He's a second line forward, but he has to be our first liner, all right? So that's not a good first line left winger right there. Don't look at the overall. Look at that um, that category, second line left winger. Camilleri, Camilleri, he would fit in on the first line just fine. He only, Even though he's only 85 overall, since he's a first liner, he will produce like a first liner. So we're covered for a first line center, and Jerome McGinley is a second line forward, okay? So our first line has one first liner and two second liners on it. So that's how you got to start thinking about our line. So our first line is uh, very is not very good at all. It's called the center. That's it. Our second line, uh, Glenn Cross, should be on the third line. So that's not good. Yuri Hoodler, um, he fits in on the second line center. Okay, so Hoodler's not bad. And Stepniak, Stepniak should be a third line scorer as well. Okay, uh, Blake Como, Blake Como should be a third line scorer. Okay, so Como belongs back there. That's fine. Stajan could be a second line forward. So we could actually move Stajan up and Stepniak down, even though the positions are different. Just let me see this for now, okay? Uh, Kostopoulos, see, Tom Kostopoulos is a minor league checking forward. So he, he's, he doesn't even belong on the fourth line. All right, so we're going to move Kostopoulos down to the fourth line. All right, Backlund, I think, was a third line scorer. Yeah, Backlund's a third line scorer, so leave him on the third line. And uh, this Ivanin's guy, he's a fourth line tough guy, so he can stay on the fourth line. Kostopoulos was the minor, yeah, he's the minor checker. And Jackman is probably a minor. Oh, no, he's a fourth liner, so he, yeah, he's a grinder, all right? So, 
It looks like we don't have a first line. We don't have a second line. We have Hoodler and Stajan who could play on the second line. Um, now, if we move Tange down to the second... Actually, you know what? That's what I'll do. I'll fill out where we do have, all right? So, again, look could be on the first line. We filled out the second line with Hoodler, Stage, and Tange. The third line could be Como, Stepniak, and Backlund. That works out. We could pa uh, put Backlund in the middle there, all right? The fourth line, we only have two fourth liners. Tom Kostopoulos doesn't uh, fit out there, all right? So, we're missing a fourth line center. We have our third line. We have our second line. And we're missing out on a first line left winger and a first line right winger because Jerome again is not getting it done. So, that's how you can tell if you're a playoff team now. Now, we have a good, what, one, two, uh, three, yeah, we have three positions on just forward. Three positions on forward, that's not what it should be, all right? Uh, and now defenseman, Bowmeister is a, he's a top two, so Bowmeister's good on the force, on the first line there. Giordano, Giordano's only a top four, so he's not a top two, okay? Top four defenseman, he belongs down here. All right, so we put him down there. Weidman, he's a top four, so Weidman belongs to back there. Uh, Sarich... To Sarich is a top six. All right, so we move Sarich down here. Babchuk, he's a top six. All right, so we move to him down here. And then Butler, he is a top six as well. All right, so defensively, we're missing out on a uh, first line defenseman. We're missing out on uh, two first line forwards. And uh, we well, we could fit, uh, fit out the rest if we uh, put Jerome down. But you guys see what I'm saying. We're already missing out on three first line players. Two forwards and one defenseman. So we're not a playoff team. Alright, that's what you got to look for. Yes, the overalls are in there as well. But you need to fill up every position with a player that can play that position. To make your team fully, uh, to play fully uh, to their full potential basically. Alright, I've noticed that when I've done previous simulations. Um, so yeah, we're not going to be a playoff team. So I think the smart thing to do would definitely be trading uh, Kiprasov, Aginla, any other players who have really good trade value. Bo Meester and Giordano, I'm kind of on the fence about because, again, this is only a five-year GM mode commentary, and uh, they would only be 33 years old at the end of it. So they could still be uh, useful towards years three, four, and five when we're going to need it. All right, um, now hang on a sec. Let me see who my best players for trade value is. Bomeister is our best. Uh, Barchisi is our second, but Barchisi staying. Brody's going to stay as well. Backlund staying. Reinhardt staying. Giordano's next. Camilleri Aginla. All right, so it looks like even though Camilleri is good, boys, um, if we're doing a rebuild, right, I want to trade these guys nice and early so that I can guarantee ourselves um, one of the top three draft picks, basically, all right? Uh, okay, so before we do anything like this, I, we still have a lot to do, I know, and I want to explain everything to you guys. These first few videos are going to be very long, don't worry about that. We're going to go to our scouting report, and we're going to see who we want to set up our scout report for, and uh, who we want to go after, because what my goal is, is to be the... Um, the top three for draft picks, right? Obviously, there's a lottery at the end, so you can it can always change, but I want to be top three. Now, it's saying McKinnon, Shinkarook. Um, now, also, they haven't updated the roster, so all the guys who got drafted this year, like Yakupov, are also in the same draft class as guys who are coming up this year, like uh, McKinnon. All right, so this first year draft class is actually stacked, so it'll be very good to get the uh, a lot of draft picks this year. Uh, I'd say McKinnon would be going first overall, but let's just sort by potential here. Uh, this guy, but it's red. This guy, Ristulin, and these, yeah, these six guys here. Uh, we got, what, uh, defenseman, left winger, center, defenseman, center, left wing. All right, so we pretty much have everything. Um, so there's centers, left wingers, and defensemen who look like they could be superstars. All right, and any goaltenders as well. Because Kiprasov is going, ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. look at this Chris Clark guy. That's gold potential five star. Now he could be a an elite goalie of the future. QMJHL. All right, I want to scout that guy because if we're getting rid of um, Kiprasov, we didn't have any young uh, goalie potential guys. So yeah, I think I might want to go after that guy. Now if that potential goes down to four stars, you know that that changes the thing. But I want to go after him. So QMJHL goalie. That's are going to be our our first scouting assignment. All right, QMJHL goalie. Where are you? Let me sort by this again. Yeah, this guy Clark, it's saying that he is a an elite goalie, so six weeks. If that turns to white and it's six white stars, he's he's the guy I'm going after, right? That is an amazing player. Um, okay, so, all right, all right, so we got that figured out. So now we have to go into trade negotiations. All right, so, um, actually, no, let's do trading block first. Let's set up our trading block for the type of players that we're going to want. I've already done the current, I want draft picks, yeah. Now, trading block. I want a forward between the ages of 17 and 23. 
All right, with a potential of at least three and a half stars. Okay, actually no, four stars. Ah, uh, at least three and a half stars. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's about it. That's all I want. I'm not gonna break it down anything else. No, it's just like that. All right, so I want a, a young forward between 17 and 23 with at least potential of three and a half stars. All right, we're gonna do the same thing for defense. All right, 17 to 23. All right, three and a half stars. Whoa, there you go. Boom. All right, and we're also gonna do goaltender. All right, just in case that goalie in the scouting report doesn't turn out to who to be who I thought he'd be, or if um. We don't get the first overall pick. It's very hard to trade now for the first overall pick. You guys will see that when it comes around. Uh, potential range. Give me four-star potential for the goalie. All right, so there you go. That's what I want. Surplus. Don't worry about the surplus. Trading block. I'm going to add players to the trading block, all right? Jerome, where are you? Aginla, all right. Kippersoff, where are you? Uh, Kippersoff, we're going to put on there. And Camilleri. Those are going to be our best players to put on the trading block, all right? There you go. Uh, yes, I would like to commit to those changes. And one more thing, I just want to remember if I, uh, if I remember to turn off, what's it called? The injuries. I think I did. Let's see. Injuries off. Yeah, I did. Okay, good. All right. So the training block is off. What I want to do is we can make our trades, but what I want to do is I want to simulate up a few days here. No, I'm not going to skip the preseason. All right. I just want to simulate up a few days to see if we get any, uh, Ooh, look at this. Minnesota acquired Matias Olin from Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay acquired a 2013 first round pick and Joel Broda. All right, so a free agent that uh, Tampa Bay just signed, they got a first round pick out of it. But Minnesota looks like they're uh, stacking up. They want, they got Olin, Suter, Parise. Yeah, man, they, they're looking for a playoff run. So let me just simulate up a few days here because we put a few players on the trading block. Let's see if any teams come to us. All right, because if a team comes to us, then they're going to definitely. Ooh, oh, damn, that's a good trade. Ooh, okay, so Vancouver wants two first-round picks this year and next year for Mike Camilleri. The reason I say it's good, I know Vancouver's a really good team, boys, and in the simulation that um, they may be really late first-round picks, but still, two first-round picks, those are trade assets of the future. And Camilleri, I know he's good, but two first-round picks for a 30-year-old, all right? I mean, uh, two first-round picks, man, that's... Uh, and he's 85 overall, Oof. All right, all right, all right. So I'll remember that, okay? I'm, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to say no to it right now, but I know that the Vancouver Canucks want that. Now, let me go to the Vancouver's team, and let's check out Vancouver's team, because if they're going to have a, uh, a very good year and a very good next year, that might not be a good pick. I mean, 222 overall picks for Camilleri, I think I could get something better than that, right? Um, this year, ooh, look, they, no, 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 no. They have their uh, rookies started because it's, uh, yeah, it's preseason. All right, you know what? I'm going to say no to that trade right now. Let me simulate. Actually, I'm not going to simulate. I'm going to do the trades right now myself. Yeah, we'll do the trades right now ourselves. That is a juicy trade, and I know to go back to do it again, but I just, ah, Vancouver's too good. And if you give them Camilleri, they're even better. So they may have a really good season and a really good playoff run. And um, I think I can... If I trade Camilleri for one first-round pick that's top 10, that's better than two first-round picks that are both top 20 uh, or bottom 20. So, um, yeah, I'm going to skip on that. So, Anaheim, they would want Camilleri. Would they want to give up their first? They would want to give up their first-round pick. Anaheim, I would rather give the draft picks to than uh, Vancouver. Boston, they want Camilleri. I don't want to give it to Boston. Buffalo, I don't want to give it to Buffalo. Uh, Carolina, no. I want to find a crappy team. Colorado, they want Camilleri, but they could be a crappy team. They don't want to give up their first round pick, though, this year. So that would be a hard trade to uh, put through. So, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, Columbus wants Camilleri. Oh, uh, they don't want to give up their first round pick this year. Next year's, though, ah, uh, no. Let's see if there's anyone else. Dallas, they may be a good team, though, if I give them Camilleri. Detroit, they may be a good team as well. Uh, Edmonton, they don't want Camilleri. Florida would want Camilleri. They don't want to give up their first. LA wants Camilleri, but they're going to be a good team. Minnesota, same thing. Montreal, ooh. You know what, though? Montreal's got Carey Price. I don't know. They could be a wild card. No, I'm going to say no to Montreal. I think Anaheim is still our best. New Jersey doesn't want to give up their first. Islanders don't want to give up their first. The Rangers are going to be way too good if I give them Camilleri. Ottawa, no. Philly, Whew, I think Philly might not be a good team in this game the first because of their weak defensive core. I know they have uh, Pronger is okay in this game. He's playing. They got Luke Shen, Coburn, Mazaros, Pronger. Team. No, no, they're going to be way too good of a team. Voracek, Simmons, uh, Hartnell. 
uh, Giroux, it's just these guys like Couturier and Shen, I don't think they're that good. Yeah, like Couturier is a third line checker in this game. So that I don't think they fill out. I think Philly might be our best bet right now. Why won't that trade go through? Hang on. They probably have too many players under contract. All right. So I think Philadelphia so far. And yeah, I think Philly, Philadelphia so far would be our best bet. All right. So I'll come back to Philly. All right. Phoenix. No, they don't want to give up their first. Uh, uh, Pittsburgh doesn't want Camilleri. Ooh, San Jose might not be, be bad either. Ooh, San Jose or Philly so far. All right. Tampa, no. Toronto, no. I'm not going to in Toronto. Vancouver, no. Uh, Washington, no. Winnipeg, no. Okay. So it's going to be between... Camilleri is going to go to either San Jose or Philadelphia. All right? Who do you think is going to do worse? Philadelphia or San Jose? We're going to have to check out their starting goalies. It's obviously going to be Brzgalov versus Niemi. Brzgalov is a starting goalie, 86 overall. All right? We'll compare him to Niemi. Uh, San Jose's Niemi. Uh, goalies. Niemi. Let's see. He's only 82. He is still a starting goalie, though. So, I mean, technically, he still gets it done. But he is only 82 overall. All right, let's check out their defensive core quickly. Um, this is what I mean about uh, trades now. i got to make sure. They got uh, Brett Burns, who I know is good. Can I just go this way? Yeah, okay. So, Brett Burns is top four. Boyle's top four. Top six. Top four. So, they don't have any top two defensemen here in uh, San Jose. So, that will hurt them. All right, in Philadelphia, uh, defensemen... They have, they don't have any top two either, but they have six top fours. All right, so I think Philly's defenseman is better than uh, San Jose's. And their forwards are better. I mean, and their goaltender is better. Forwards, let's see, uh, roll. They have two firsts, three seconds, three thirds. Okay, they fill out their lines pretty well. They just don't have a, a first. Okay, so they fill out their lines pretty well in Philadelphia. I think it might be San Jose. I think it might be San Jose. Let's see what they have here in San Jose. Ooh, San Jose, they have a lot better forwards, though. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five first-round forwards. And if I give them Camilleri, their first two lines are all first. Oh, you know what? That against their, ooh, high scoring against, ooh, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Um, I'll give them San Jose because I like how Phil oh, Philadelphia. Yeah, and no, I'll give them to San Jose. I like Philadelphia, how they had Briz and their defensive core. Yeah, I'll give it to, uh, yeah, I'll give it to them. Okay. Um, ooh, but Philadelphia just made that trade with Minnesota. I could get two first-round picks from them. Hang on a sec. Where was that trade from Minnesota? Didn't Philly just make a trade with Minnesota, or was it another? Oh, it was Tampa Bay. No, it was Tampa Bay. My bad. All right, we'll go San Jose. So, San Jose, I want your first for the two next years, and I want a skater. Which skaters are you willing to give away? This hurdle guy you're willing to give away? Let's see. Um, all right, three and a half stars. All right, not too bad. Y'all yeah, take him. Let's see. Um, uh, skaters, where is he? Hurdle, hurdle. There he is. All right, so that trade will go through. It's league approved. All right, two first round picks and a hurdle for Mike Camilleri. Now, is there anything else I can give back just to help these guys out? I can give Ivanovins to them to help it out, but, uh, no, I gotta give draft picks because then I gotta ask for more players. Uh, do they want any draft picks? They don't want any draft picks, so I'm not going to offer them. Let's see if this will go through, and let's just see what what they uh, they say to it, all right? Uh, all right, so I just want to show you because there's different responses. Watch. This would seem to be one of those occasions where the trading block paid off in spades. San Jose could start a deal based on what you want from us. You see, they're very happy with what I've asked from them, okay, because everything from them is players that they were willing to give up. But the value of what you're asking us to take just isn't up to snuff at all. It doesn't match our uh, block needs particularly well either, all right? So it's just that the value in general just doesn't match it. And, oh, they don't want Camilleri. I thought they wanted Camilleri. Oh, okay, I'm going back to Philly then. Yeah, because Philly wants them. Yeah, I'm going back to Philly. All right, I'm going to take these guys from Philly. I didn't even realize that. Sorry, boys, I blanked out there. All right, uh, so we'll take these guys from Philly. Skaters that they're willing to give away. Wellwood, uh, that's too much. He's too much of a player. Let's see these guys. Uh, what are they? Uh, these guys, ooh, Cousins. Cousins. He's a three-and-a-half star 19-year-old. Yeah, I'll take him. All right, now, let's see if this goes through. What do they say? Uh, same thing with the uh, the top part. The Philadelphia Flyers are fine with coughing up what you are after. It would seem like uh, trade block surplus has come up in handy here. Whatever, we can live with what you're sending us, but it's uh, but not in this deal. Your offer is woefully insufficient when I consider the value. All right, so 
It's just that I'm not offering enough back. All right, so we're going to take Cousins out of here. We're going to offer, we're going to take, sorry, the worst player that they're willing to give up. We'll take this Blake Kessel guy, Phil Kessel's brother. All right, uh, now let's see if this will go through. Uh, you've done all right meeting our block needs, but the value you are sending us way, uh, our way isn't sufficient at all. So I'm going to have to add some draft picks back here. Oh, actually, they're willing to take a lot more skaters here. Hang on. Who could I send back that I really don't mind sending back? Jackman, Stepniak. I could send St Stepniak back, but I could actually get a draft pick for him. Um, let's try to send this Ivanovans guy back because he's 33 and actually they would accept it. Ooh, but that's too many players now and I can't get someone. No, that won't work. Uh, goalies, I can give him Irving, but he could be a backup of the future. Carlson, I could give them as well. He's our backup for right now, but I don't really need him. Yeah, I could give up Carlson. Give up that Carlson guy, and you could give me one of these worst guys back. This guy, Aikson. All right, so that helps it out a little bit more. All right, Ivanovins, Carlson, and Camilleri for Kessel, uh, Aikson, and two firsts. Will it go through? There it goes. There you go. You see how the trade block works? Both teams worked out there. All right. Every player that I was willing to trade to them, they wanted, and they were giving up every um, everything that, that I was getting back, they wanted to give up. On behalf of the Philadelphia Flyers organization, I accept your trade offer. We'll see you out on the ice. So that was a trade that was very even. All right. They didn't say anything like, we'll take this deal any day of the week. So Mike Camilleri for two first round picks from Philadelphia and uh, this year and next year. Okay, so Calgary, Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia, next year, Calgary and Philadelphia. So we've already started our rebuild. Mike Camilleri has been traded, all right, for basically two first round picks. And we're hoping that the Philadelphia Flyers aren't a very good team. All right, but if they are, then the trade wasn't uh, that good. But we still have other players like Kippersoff and Iginla. And if anything, once the draft comes around, we can trade those first round picks to move up in the draft. All right, so that's stage one, boys. All right, we're going to continue. We still have a lot more to go before we start the simulation. But let me know, uh, when it comes to Aginla and Kippersoff, what would you rather guys see? Another trade where I get two first round picks from a team that's questionably a playoff and might be a good team? Or should I just trade for one uh, first round pick or a prospect from a really crappy team that we know is going to be crappy, like Columbus or... Uh, or um, uh, another team. I can't even think of another team right now, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Let me know and let me know what you guys feel about the Camilleri trade.